Welcome back. I would like to show you a MATLAB example for the model reference neuroadaptive control. I am going to look at, I am going to take this A, B, um, lambda, and uncertainty. Um, uncertainty is unstructured, and I am going to use radial basis neural networks. However, for the purpose of the simulation, I needed to enter some uncertainty. I choose it like this. I am going to show you the full code. You can download the code and you can change this uncertainty. You can change the uncertainty in the control effectiveness matrix with some other continuous functions and explore the performance by yourself. As you know, I always encourage you to do that. Basically, um, this also represents 25% reduction uh, in control effectiveness under ideal conditions. This is one or identity in general. We have one control input. That's why I am using um, one. All right. So this is the um, neuroadaptive controller, which has the nominal controller given in here, adaptive controller given in here. Uh, you're, from the previous videos, please remember why we include UN here because of this. If this is one, you don't need to include this in here um, when the control effectiveness is known or basically identity. Since we don't know the uh, structure, we are going to pretend that we don't know the structure of this uncertainty. We are going to construct theta zero uh, with radial basis functions. Later in the code, I am going to call it as neurons just a heads up. And as I mentioned, I am using sigma modification without loss of generality. If you like, you can also use projection operator. And this is the reference model. As a refresher, this is AR matrix, the structure of the BR matrix. Jumping to the code, this code I am going to run for 40 seconds. I am going to discretize everything by first order Euler method. And our sampling is 0.005 seconds. Here is the A matrix that you just saw, B matrix, lambda, initial condition for X. I am choosing K1 using linear quadratic regulator theory, K2 satisfying this condition, AR and BR here. Um, similar to the previous videos, um, if you call X is the position, X2 is the velocity, I want, you know, I am choosing my C matrix here as one zero. I am interested the command to follow the position or X one, that's why. And um, this is the adaptation gain. This is the sigma modification leakage gain. Um, this is the solving the Lyapunov equation. In the previous MATLAB video, I, I mentioned why we include transpose here. Um, Initialization for W hat. This is the second part of the code. Uh, basically implementation of the, or uh, MATLAB simulation of the, uh, these differential equations or neuroadaptive uh, model reference, neuroadaptive control architecture. Uh, basis function theta is composed of neurons and the nominal control signal. I am going to set the compact set for the first state position between 2 and uh, minus 2. So I am going to assume that, you know, x1 is operating, the position state is operating between minus 2 to 2, you can call it meters. And the x2 state is operating between 2 and minus 2 as well. I am going to include initially 5 neurons for x1 or radial basis functions and five radial basis functions for x2 exactly like this uh, width of these functions selected to be 0.25 and in this case i am also include the bias term and uh, i explained my motivation of this it won't hurt but it also has uh, advantages as we demonstrated on the neuroadaptive control example in matlab video for the scalar case in this YouTube playlist on my channel. And the rest of the code is pretty standard command, implementation of the control signals, uncertainty, 
inserting answers into the system data recording. I am going to call this basically along with the nominal control signal, the neurons that we use or 11 neurons, I am going to call it as case one. And then this is the plotting routine. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mention, you can stop the video. Basically, if you type this up, you are going to plot your results. For the second case, I am going to include more neurons. Previously, I was only including neurons, these basically. Uh, I am going to insert more neurons between. Likewise, I am going to insert more neurons between these 2N1, 1N0, both for X1 state and X2 state. So the, in the second case, we are going to look at 19 neurons. 18 plus one, the bias. For the third case, I am even, you know, I am going to insert between two and one and a half these additional neurons for X1 and X2. In this case, we, are, we will implement 35 neurons and I am going to call it case number three. What we expect as we include more neurons, uh, residual approximation error coming from the neural networks uh, should get smaller and smaller, so we should achieve a better performance. Let's see. This is the first case, and I am going to use gamma equals to 1 and sigma modification 0.1. I have a, you know, let me mention, this is the command applied to the system. This is the XR1, which tracks the uh, command perfectly. And this is the actual X1, the position state. Position reference model, position state. We want them to close to, to each other as much as possible to achieve a good performance. Likewise, this is X2, this is X2R, and this is the control signal. In the previous MATLAB example, so-called uh, model reference adaptive control example in MATLAB, I mentioned how you can get rid of these spikes, basically by filtering the control, uh, by filtering the command signal C. Anyway, focusing on this video, I want you to focus on this case one, especially this part, which we are going to see a clear improvement as we increase the number of neurons. This is case two, basically compare this, you know, look at here, here, and especially here, we basically, this, the difference is much less because we included uh, more neurons in case two. And case three, you are going to see that the performance is much closer. Now, compare this with this much less. You can stop the video, look at yourselves. Basically, it's a clear improvement. Well, um, if I am going to implement this adaptive controller, it is ready in my opinion. I can implement this is a very acceptable performance, but you know, on we are right now learning. So let's explore, let's do some stuff. Let's increase adaptation gain for each cases. For case one, when we inc increase adaptation gain from one to 10, um, we are going to see the effect of the sigma modification uh, much closely. So um, basically we have a gap because of the sigma modification. Um, we also have some performance errors. Actually, this is not a you know, this is not a bad performance, okay? I mean, if I am implementing this in a practical system and see a performance, this is acceptable. But now case two, if you include more neurons, you are going to see this is almost like, you know, close to each other. Now case three, this is very close to the, um, um, I, I wouldn't say asymptotic error convergence, but they are very close. But to my eyes, this performance looks like, you know, um, asymptotic stability of the error dynamics. We have, you know, ultimate, uniform ultimate boundedness or boundedness since we are using neural networks, but this is a very acceptable performance. Um, so the key point that you should take from this video, as we increase the neurons, radial basis functions, um, performance gets better. 
which is expected, expected theoretically from the universal uh, um, neural networks, universal function approximation theorem. And it is the numerical illustration, nothing else, theory and numerical um, simulation consistent with each other, which is the happy ending. I would like to show you some details right now. Uh, for the case when adaptation gain is 10 and sigma modification is 0.1. Um, first of all, let me explain the colors. You remember we had the bias term in the um, basis function. This green line, which is aligning with this black line, sorry, blue line, this green is the weight estimate W hat that corresponds to the bias. This yellow is the weight estimate that corresponds to the UN basis function. The blue ones are the weight estimates that correspond to the um, radial basis functions that uses x1 state and the red weight estimates correspond to the radial basis functions cor uh, that uh, multiplies to the uh, x radial basis functions that multiplies uh, that uses x2 so to make this point clear, right, we have W hat transpose this theta. Theta includes the bias radial basis functions that depends on x bar, radial basis functions that depends on x2 and un. Un's basically W hat estimates that multiplies un are yellow. Weight estimates that have that multiplied bias is green. Weight estimates, I want you to focus on weight estimates multiplied x1 and radial basis x2, which are respectively blue and red. I don't expect myself or you to make further conclusions from this figure, but I want you to see what's go what will go on when we include more neurons. Just focus on this blue and red um, weights correspond to the radial basis functions. When you include more neurons, in this magnitude initially that was changing from 0.2 to this number, now changing between 0.1-ish to this number. But what you are going to see that weights con started to converge instead of in here converging to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, we are converging to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen values. Basically, weights when you include more uh, basis functions, basically function approximation kind of micromanages the weights such that your weight estimation error is better. That's why instead of converging to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points, right now you have, if my, you know, this count should be 13, uh, you are basically 13 different numbers. So you're basically, think about like this, right? You are trying to approximate a function. Um, you are trying to approximate a function and you are basically, once you include your in more neurons, you are kind of fine-tuned. This is what's happening here. Now, if you compare case two with case three, you have significantly more number of neurons and I, it is hard to count from here. So basically, this is kind of the bigger version of the plots that is here. If you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, much more than 13, more than 20. So even when you include more neurons, more radial basis functions, they better fine tune themselves such that you better approximate the unknown function. All right, um, I hope you, this video, uh, you find this video helpful, a punchline to take, more neurons, the better. All right, take care.